Hi, I'm James Brundage with Start Automating, and today I'm going to talk about how to write a complete control in Show UI. Show UI is a PowerShell module that allows you to write WPF user interfaces in a fraction of the time and code as it takes in C Sharp. And you can download it or find out more at showui.codeplex.com or show-ui.com. Today we're going to talk a little bit about how to build a clock control. Now there have been a few clocks floating around the PowerShell Show UI universe recently. Uh, Doug Fink wrote uh, this Show UI PowerShell clock. And Ryan Grant has been building a binary clock with PowerShell, which you can find on Poshcode. And both of these are great simple examples of using Show UI, but neither of them is something that you can copy and paste into your code and go ahead and reuse. Today we're going to actually create a reusable con function that other people can take, copy and paste, and start to use in their projects, and show you how you might go about creating a fully reusable component. And we're also going to walk through some of the new features of Show UI 1.1 that make that easier. So here is Show Clock. We can go ahead and show a simple clock with just Show Clock as job. I can also count down how long it is until Christmas and actually change the foreground color as well, fully customizing the display string and the message when it's completed. Oh, and obviously go full screen. And I can use it inside of another control. So we're going to walk through how to build this and how to make any function that you'd like to go inside of any other UI element. So the first thing to understand is the ubiquitous parameter sets. There's a number of parameters that you should really have on any control that you build with Show UI, just because they're very likely to be used anywhere else. One is the name, another is the row, the column, the row span, the column span, the width, the height, the top, the left, the dock, and the show, and as job parameters. All these parameters are found on every UI element inside of Show UI, and they're all very commonly used to control where the control goes inside of other UIs. So the first step of making a reusable component is just to copy and paste this chunk out so that your control is reusable. Above this I have a number of parameters for just my function. I have a switch for full screen, and I have the font weight, font style, font size, and font family. And these are all common names of other UI font parameters that I've just copied and pasted from other functions. The background and foreground parameter work the same way. And I've got a few more that are clock specific. Time format, completed message, and countdown too. I even defined a parameter set. The default one is clock, and the other one is countdown too. Although I don't really technically use the parameter set name later to check on which one is happening. In the process block, I have a lot of pre-processing pre of my parameters to do. The thing to understand is that anything that you package into a function in Show UI, you're going to have one container control, and a number of parameters are going to need to directly go to that container control, like name, row, column, row span, column span, width, height, etc. A number of other parameters are going to be targeted at your control inside. And they might create a new UI element, they might go ahead and change the text in the control, they might start a clock or start an event. Whatever they might do, they're going to be processed in the loaded handler of that container control that you've got. The container control needs to get one set of parameters, and the other one needs to get the other set. And to show you I11, we've made it very simple for the inner control to pick up on all the other parameters. So in PowerShell, there's this magic variable called psbound parameters. And what this does is it contains every parameter passed to your function. By doing this line here, UI parameters equals empty hash table plus psbound parameters, I'm actually copying all the parameters that were passed into my function into this UI parameters. 
This means that I can manipulate both UI parameters in this independently, which means that I can strip out the inner parameters, which is the next step, and also maybe add some custom ones that I'd like to the UI. So the inner parameters I've listed here, and just time format, countdown to, completed message, font size, family, width, style, foreground, and full screen. Background is actually not one that I want to switch out of the UI because if I set a background and it only applies to my inner control and not the control containing it, it's going to look really weird. And background's probably the only general exception to the rule. But overall, whatever parameters go to your inner control get stripped out in code like this. And the next thing that I do is a little bit of custom code for one parameter, time format. So I have a def lot of default handling in this function. And if there wasn't a time format, then what I'm going to go ahead and do is set a couple of them automatically. I'm actually going to go ahead and set it to F, which is the full date format, and a short hours, minutes, seconds format for time spans. And I'm going to figure out which one I'm going to need to set by the presence of the countdown to parameter. So if I'm going to be counting down something, I'm going to go ahead and use the countdown-like format. And if I'm not, then I'm going to go ahead and display the full time. The next thing I'm going to do is that I kind of put time format into the correct string format presentation if it's not there. That way, if you passed in your own time format, it'll still work. But this will correct it if you haven't. And then I put it explicitly in PS bound parameters. Remember, PS bound parameters is the built-in parameters to that function. And what show UI 1.1 does is it actually looks in PS bound parameters. And everything that you put into PS bound parameters will become an automatic variable inside of every handler inside of your code. <coughs> this makes it considerably easier to deal with each of the parameters inside of your code. And what I'm doing here is pushing defaults into there. So this code was set up to push the default of the time format, and the rest of it is a lot simpler. If there's no completed message, I'll just say done. Otherwise, I'll give it a font size, font family, font style, font weight, and foreground that are good defaults. And I'll go ahead and re-push the full screen value on the PS bound parameters. Now, here I create a UI to contain my element. And in most cases, I use a border. And I use a border because it's a UI that only contains a single child. It makes it a lot easier to manage the rest of the code. I don't have to go indexing through the controls to find my custom controls. I just say this.child. And new border uses splatting to apply all of those UI parameters, including the background onto the border. It also sets some horizontal alignment and vertical alignment values so that if it's displayed full screen, it displays correctly. And there are two important things that it does. It uses uninitialized and onloaded. Uninitialized happens just before anything gets displayed. And because I want this clock to work specially if there's no other control, this is where I have to handle that code. And onloaded is what happens right as the control is created um, but after it has been initialized. And it's the way that I do all of my startup code and handle most of my parameters. So in an uninitialized, I simply check to see if this parent is a window. And if it is, all sorts of fun stuff starts to go in the way. If full screen was not set, and remember full screen's automatically coming down because it's set in PS bound parameters, then I go ahead and make it an automatically sizing window. Then I check background, and if it was transparent, I actually make the window transparent as well. If it wasn't transparent, I give the border a little bit of a radius and thickness. Inside, if it wasn't, if it was full screen, what I'll do is change the window's style and state, and change the content alignment of the inner control. And this means that when it stretches out to be full screen, things won't appear in the upper left corner. And then I'm going to change size to content to manual, which will prevent the window from automatically becoming the size of the border. Any way that I cut it, I want the window to start up in the center screen. Now, I add three event handlers here. Well, two if they're full screen. The first is a cleanup one. And that's when the window is closing, I'm going to actually go ahead and stop the running command. And this is so that if I have a clock, it's not continuing to waste memory. Uh, pumping out numbers to a UI that doesn't exist anymore. 
the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to handle the right mouse button. And this is copied and pasted from the other uh, clock examples. All it does is it closes the control. And if it was full screen, then I'm not going to do this. But otherwise, I'm going to allow the drag handler. Because I don't want you to drag around a full screen window because that will also look weird. It'll pop down. And that's initialized. Initialized is great if you need to change the way the window displays if your control wants to act special, if it's the only thing in the window. But the more common per our case is being in the window with other things. So when I'm loaded, I go ahead and I set the background to dollar background. Again, I'm getting this automatic variable because it was put in PS bound parameters. And I'm creating a child. And this child uses most of the automatic variables. It just goes ahead and creates a new label with centered alignment and it goes ahead and it puts that uh, inside of the border. And then we go ahead and I, we check to see if countdown 2 was set. If countdown 2 was set then we go ahead and do a countdown and if it wasn't set we do a simple clock. The simple clock's really easy. So what we do is we set data context WPF refresher data context is the ver or property in WPF that is used for data binding and it's also where we're going to stick a lot of the background data sources that we're going to work with in PowerShell. And we're going to get PowerShell data source. Now in show UI 1.1 we introduced on output, on error, and several other events to handle changes within the PowerShell data source to make it easier to work with background data. So what happens when this one d goes into play is that it sets output to be the last output just from this PowerShell data source. And then it sets this child content to be the time formatted string of output. Really, really simple code. The reason this all works is because at this point, dollar this will become wherever the data context is. And this makes all the other magic about how parameters are handled in show UI fall right into place. So time format, which was declared all the way in my parameters up here, falls automatically all the way down into my UI and into my UI's data source and output change handler. And the script is obscenely simple. While true, it outputs get date and it sleeps a second. The countdown script is a little bit trickier because I actually have to do a little bit of coding uh, magic to embed my countdown to parameter. There are several other ways that I can Im approach embedding parameters, but this is a simple one if you just have simple types. So I do script block create and I create a countdown to that is simply the time that I'm counting to. And this contains a do while and all it does is it simply goes through, figures out how much time is left. If the time left is less than zero, then it'll output a completed message, and otherwise it'll output the time span. And when the output changes here, if the output was a time span, then I change the content to be the time formatted output, and otherwise I change the content to be the completed message. Again, completed message and time format are coming all the way down from the parameter declarations up here into your UI, whether your UI was launched with show or as job. And that's it. It's a lot of PowerShell magic, um, mainly encapsulated in an unloaded event. All of your parameters from PS bound parameters automatically show up anywhere inside your UI so that you can use them quickly and easily. And you can use this stripping out of parameters technique to make sure that your top level control always works well. And with this you can make a show clock that works on its own or a show clock that works within a control. And that's how you write complete controls and show UI. I hope this helps. Thanks.